Receiving a top three pick in the NBA draft means that the team with the selection will get a brilliant shot to acquire a future all-star, if not a future superstar, but not all top picks turn out as you may expect. In 1984, the NBA draft saw two great prospects chosen with the first and second overall picks in Hakeem Olajuwon and Sam Bowie. However, it was the third overall pick, Michael Jordan, who had the most significant impact on the game of basketball, eventually completely revolutionizing it. As for the 2010 decade, a similar pattern would seem to emerge. Although some of the selections of the top two picks in this decade were outstanding, it was often the player who slipped to third overall that would truly flourish. With that said, let's go over the top three picks of every year in the 2010 decade and take a look at their NBA careers so far from a 2024 lens. Welcome to Sportsphere. Let's get into it. Picked up first overall in the 2010 draft, John Wall's NBA career has experienced both a remarkable rise that came quickly crashing down. After being drafted by the Wizards in 2010, he quickly established himself as an electrifying point guard known for his speed and playmaking ability in his rookie season, averaging over 16 points and 8 assists a game. His game would continue to improve over the years, seeing him earn multiple all-star selections, and he soon became the face of the franchise. He even led the Wizards to multiple Eastern semi-final playoff appearances, despite falling slightly short of the conference finals on multiple occasions. However, near the midpoint of the 2017-18 season, an injury to his left heel would change the entire trajectory of his NBA career for the worst. This injury required major surgery. However, things would go from bad to worse, as an infection would occur as a result of the surgery, resulting in the recovery length to be increased further. This proved to be the career-defining moment, and was the primary event that halted his long career. As a result of the injury, Wall would miss half the 2017-18 season. And after returning in the subsequent season, Wall would suffer a ruptured Achilles in the later stages of the 2018-19 season. The Wizards were basically forced to later trade him out of Washington, where he would later appear in a Houston Rockets uniform. But it wouldn't be until the 2020-21 season until he would return. He would show some signs of his previous ability prior to the major injuries. It was clear he was no longer the same player he once was. Injuries continued to play a factor in Wall's time at the Rockets, where he missed out on the entire 2021-22 season due to more knee and Achilles injuries. The following season in 2022-23 saw him be traded to the Clippers. However, due to more lingering issues, the Clippers would waive him to create cap space and accommodate a trade, and he hasn't been picked up by another NBA team ever since. After being drafted as the second overall pick by the Philadelphia 76ers in 2010, Evan Turner showed promise as a versatile wing player who also had some playmaking ability. Turner continued to develop and had a breakout offensive season with the 76ers, averaging over 17 points. However, there was no denying that these numbers were inflated because Philly were probably the single worst team in the league at the time. He would later be traded to the Pacers for the tail end of the season, then the Celtics in the subsequent year. And although he would play an effective second unit role on a contending team, his offensive impact still slowly declined over time. Regardless, Turner would still be signed by the Portland Trailblazers in 2016 to a $70 million contract over four years. And even though this contract received some criticism, Turner's well-varied experience and versatile skill set was something the Blazers valued. However, his time at Portland indeed proved to be quite underwhelming, especially with his poor display of shooting. His final season with Portland saw him shoot just over 22% from three, which was no wonder his hooping duties proved to be in low demand after that season. Despite the fall from his earlier successes, Turner was still an effective player and good leader. However, his career proved to be a very average one overall, with averages of just under 10 points, 4.6 rebounds, and 3.5 assists in his 10 NBA seasons. After being drafted by the New Jersey Nets, now Brooklyn Nets, in 2010, Derek Favors showed some promise as an athletic and skilled frontcourt player. Favors' rebounding and shot-blocking abilities were notable during his time with the Nets, and peaked during his later time at the Utah Jazz, where he played nine seasons. He was an overall solid all-round big man, but that's all he really proved to be. 
As his career progressed, factors such as changes in team dynamics, struggling to strive in a role, and lingering injuries slowly contributed to decreased contributions. Favors would later move to the Pelicans from Utah, before later moving back to Utah. And when he returned to Utah in 2020, the Jazz recognized his lack of productivity and he would begin receiving a much more limited role, averaging just over 16 minutes per game. And after just a season with the Jazz, he was traded to OKC in the 2021 season. And after another season of limited impact, Favors would soon see himself out of the NBA for good. Despite the decline, Favors has still had an above average NBA career with career averages of 10 points, seven rebounds, and 1.2 blocks in 12 NBA seasons. In 2011, after being selected first overall by the Cavs, Kyrie Irving made an immediate impact, showing his wizard-like playstyle, winning Rookie of the Year, with averages of nearly 19 points, 5.4 assists on 47% from the field, and 40% from three. After his rookie year, he would continuously improve, soon becoming one of the best point guards in the league. His elite ball handling, good shooting, and playmaking would see him even win an NBA championship with the Cavs in 2016 alongside LeBron James. That said, he would soon part ways with LeBron, joining the Celtics. And despite this move not working out, Kyrie was still the most skillful player in NBA history. He would see himself involved in continuous controversy during this period, before he would join forces with KD on the Nets, and now on the Mavericks with Luka Doncic, and the duo have seemed to finally found some form together this season. An absolute wizard on the court, Kyrie has solidified himself as the player with the single deepest bag in NBA history, which even Allen Iverson acknowledges. Pairing Kyrie to you, mm -hmm. and I think he was saying that Kyrie has a more complete handle package. Is that something you agree with? Hell yeah, he got your best. Kyrie he's has the best. He's the best. With career stats of almost 24 points, and 5.7 assists on 47% from the field and 39% from deep. Also winning an NBA championship and scoring the game winning shot to secure that chip, Kyrie Irving will go down as an all time great and a legend. After drafting Wesley Johnson at number four in the prior season for the 2011 draft, the Timberwolves had the second overall pick, but again, they would not use it wisely. Although many future stars like Kawhi Leonard and Klay Thompson were on the table, the Wolves would go with Derek Williams. Prior to being selected, Williams showed potential as an athletic big man who was a monster in the paint. After having a below average first two seasons with the Wolves, a significant injury during his third season proved to further set back his career. Despite overcoming these injuries, they seemed to linger and take a toll on him in time to come. This led to continuous trades and diminishing roles. After spending three years with the Timberwolves, Williams had brief stints on five teams, eventually landing with the Lakers in 2017. And this would end up being his final season in the NBA, where he would play just two games before being waived. Overall, an unfortunate NBA career for Williams. And there's no doubt he's one of the bigger draft busts of the decade. Ennis Cantor is one of the three centers who was drafted in the first round of the draft, selected before Jonas Valentunas and Nikola Vucevic. He had been picked by the Jazz before he would have quite a successful rookie season, earning him a spot in the second all-season rookie team. He would have his breakout year in his third season, securing a much bigger role for Utah, averaging over 12 points and 7.5 rebounds. And after his fourth season with the Jazz, he was traded to the Thunder, where he had his biggest season in numbers, averaging almost 19 points and 11 rebounds. However, since this season, it soon became clear that despite big offensive output, Cantor's defense just wasn't adequate to be a starting big man on a contending team. This saw his minutes continue to decline ever since, primarily coming off the bench for the Thunder, before being traded to the Knicks, Trailblazers, Celtics, Trailblazers, then back to Celtics, before he was no longer given an opportunity on an NBA roster. The following year was 2012, and the first overall pick saw one of the decade's best selections, with the New Orleans Pelicans selecting Anthony Davis first overall. As a big man, AD quickly made an impact in his rookie season, finishing second overall in Rookie of the Year voting, averaging 13.5 points, 8 rebounds, 1 steal, and 1.8 blocks, 
proving to be a force on both ends of the floor as just a young rookie. His second season would be his breakout year, averaging almost 21 points, 10 rebounds, and a ridiculous 2.8 blocks. ID would continue to improve his output in the years that followed, soon becoming a walking 25-point double-double, and the main man on the Pelicans. But despite his dominance as a multi-level scorer as a bigger guy, New Orleans did not seem to be an attractive destination for many stars to join forces with him. So after seven full seasons with the Pelicans, AD and Clutch Sports would, would work out a deal to send Anthony Davis to the LA Lakers to pair with LeBron James. And this was like a dream turned into reality. So much so that in their first season together in LA, the duo would lead their team to a 2020 bubble championship victory. Since then, the pair often struggled with health and haven't won a chip since, despite making the Western Finals in 2023. Regardless, Anthony Davis is a top player in the NBA. And who knows, maybe he will become a multi-time champion in the coming years. Only time will tell. Michael Kidd Gilchrist, selected as the second overall pick in the 2012 NBA Draft, entered the league with sky-high expectations. But unlike most high picks, it was his defensive skills and versatility that were his team's biggest asset. And that team turned out to be the Charlotte Bobcats, who selected him second overall. His defense quickly proved to be his biggest asset, with his long wingspan, good instincts, and hardworking mentality. However, offensively, it was a different story. See, Kid Gilchrist had size, but he wasn't that tall, and he lacked ball skills, so he would often struggle to score in the paint. And as the league began to emphasize three-point shooting more, Michael Kidd Gilchrist's inefficiency from the perimeter as a wing player was exposed, where he shot only 27% from deep in his career. Not to mention, you probably know this guy for having one of the ugliest jump shot in NBA history. Regardless, throughout his NBA career, Kidd Gilchrist averaged eight points, 5.4 rebounds, and 1.2 assists per game. After his eight seasons with Charlotte, he would eventually be waived, and after a brief stint with the Mavericks, he was waived again. As for the third pick of the draft, Bradley Beal was selected by the Washington Wizards, known for his scoring skills and potential to become an all-star shooting guard. Some doubted his value as a ball-dominant player, given his size, but the Wizards paired him with John Wall to create a dynamic duo. Beal showed promise early on, steadily improving his game each season for almost a decade, with his points per game numbers peaking at 31 points in the 2020-21 season. Despite his individual success, the Wizards missed out on deep playoff runs. With Wall sidelined due to injuries, Beal also dealt with injuries of his own before eventually requesting a trade in 2023, landing in Phoenix. While his team success was limited, Beal's personal achievements were impressive, living up to his draft potential as a top prospect. As for the 2013 NBA Draft, as you probably know, the number one pick, Anthony Bennett proved to be the biggest bust in this draft class by far, and probably also the biggest in the decade. Prior to the 2013 draft, there was no consensus top pick in that draft, and no one knew who the Cavs would select with the first pick. Although Giannis, Victor Oladipo, and CJ McCollum were still on the table, Cleveland made the executive decision to select Anthony Bennett with the first pick. This shocked the entire NBA world, and questions were soon raised because he wasn't even projected to go in the top five. As we know, this risky move did not pay off, and it was evident from the beginning. In fact, Bennett had one of the shortest NBA careers among any player on this list, playing a total of only four seasons before he was waived. It took him five games to score his first bucket and 33 games to reach double figures, quickly resulting in a regretful Cavaliers front office. He averaged just over 12 minutes and 4.2 points per game in his rookie season, proving to be a disappointment on both ends of the floor, prompting the Cavs to part ways with him the following summer. He then joined the Wolves, then Raptors, and finally the Nets, before the legendary bust was sent overseas. As for the second pick of the 2013 NBA Draft, it was a more complicated story. Drafted behind the world-renowned bust, Victor Oladipo would be selected by the Magic at number two. Victor Oladipo would quickly have an impactful rookie season with the Orlando Magic, averaging 13.8 points, four rebounds, four assists, and 1.6 steals per game. 
He continued to perform well for the Magic in subsequent seasons, but would soon be traded by the Thunder as an asset to acquire Serge Ibaka. After just a year on the Thunder, Oladipo would be traded to the Indiana Pacers, which proved to be the ideal situation for him, where he would quickly have a breakout year in 2017, averaging 23.1 points, 5.2 rebounds, 4.3 assists, and 2.4 steals per game, earning his first NBA All-Star selection and first-team All-Defense honors. However, things would quickly take a turn for the worst. Unfortunately, his success was soon cut short by a season-ending leg injury in his second season on the Pacers. Since the injury in early 2019, Oladipo has struggled to maintain consistent health, playing only 102 games over the next five seasons. He was then traded to the Miami Heat, then to the Houston Rockets, and back to Miami, where he currently plays. In the 2022-23 season, Oladipo had relatively good health, coming off the bench for the Heat and averaged over 10 points, 3.5 assists, and 1.4 steals, however still missed the 2023 playoffs due to injury. Although Oladipo is not the player he once was, there's no doubt he can still contribute in a lesser role for NBA teams. Despite facing challenges, Victor Oladipo, a two-time NBA All-Star, has demonstrated moments of brilliance and has without question had the most successful career among all the number two picks mentioned so far. After Oladipo, it was Otto Porter Jr. who was selected third overall. Porter had a solid NBA career, primarily playing as a forward. Porter would start off his career quite slow, playing very limited minutes until his third season with Washington, where he would average double digits in scoring. Porter continued to have decent two-way ability, but didn't prove to be much more than an average player. Although after six seasons with the Wizards and being traded to Chicago, Porter would have an incredible second season, averaging almost 18 points on 48% from the field and 49% from deep, it all went downhill after that, with injuries playing a part in his ability to develop consistency. After the Bulls, Porter had a stint with the Magic, then Warriors and now Raptors, he is, again, currently out due to injury. Throughout his career, he averaged around 11 points, 5 rebounds, and 2 assists per game while shooting over 40% from beyond the arc. Despite battling injuries at times, Porter was a reliable contributor on both ends of the floor while healthy. As for the 2014 NBA draft, Andrew Wiggins was selected first overall drawing significant hype where he was largely considered to be the next LeBron James. However, things didn't go exactly to plan. After being drafted by the Cavs and quickly traded to the Timberwolves, Wiggins would show promise early on, scoring almost 17 points and 5 rebounds in his first season, with scoring and defending being his standout attributes. And despite continuing to improve his numbers in the following seasons, Wiggins wasn't exactly the player people thought he would be. Some critics claimed he was missing that it factor, others claimed he was soft. But regardless, Wiggins seemed to struggle with translating his performances into wins for Minnesota, and this slowly drew more concerns as Minnesota remained a bottom team in the West for a significant time. Regardless, after six long years with Minnesota and making the playoffs only once, it seemed like a change in scenery for Wiggins was inevitable. As a result, in 2020, he was traded from Minnesota to the Golden State Warriors. Although this raised questions early, little did people know that this would be the perfect fit for Andrew Wiggins and the Golden State Warriors. After joining the Warriors, Wiggins proved that he belonged. Although he was now the second or third option behind Steph Curry and Klay Thompson, this exact scenario of having elite teammates allowed Wiggins to strive. In his first full season with the Warriors, Wiggins had his most efficient season by far scoring 18.6 points on 48% from the field and 38% from three, also with five rebounds. He continued to improve and grow with the Warriors, and in the following 2021-22 season, his impact began to translate into the postseason. After achieving his first All-Star selection, Wiggins continued to play his role in the playoffs, eventually leading to a Warriors championship. Wiggins had an outstanding playoffs campaign, and his most important performance came in Game 5 of the NBA Finals, where he scored 26 points and had 13 rebounds, making up for Steph Curry's off night to put the Warriors up 3-2 over Boston. 
While Wiggins may not have become the first option many expected at the beginning of his career, his worth as a valuable two-way player contributed greatly to a Golden State Warriors championship. Matter of fact, they couldn't have done it without him. That being said, so far this season, he's having a much diminished output so far in this 2023-24 season, playing a lesser role of under 27 minutes, scoring 12.6 points, and grabbing 4.4 rebounds per game. And it'll be interesting to see if he can bounce back from a disappointing season and get back to his 2021-22 self. After Wiggins was selected, it would be Jabari Parker picked up second overall. Prior to the 2014 NBA draft, Parker was known as a dominant force with polished offensive skills and versatility. After being selected by the Bucks second overall, he showed glimpses of immense potential in his rookie season. However, an ACL tear early on would cut it short. After his initial injury, Parker made a promising comeback with a solid season. However, in his third year, amidst a breakout season averaging over 20 points, Parker would suffer the devastating setback of tearing the same ACL as in his rookie season. Ever since that injury, he struggled to regain his form consistently, prompting his trade to the Chicago Bulls, then the Washington Wizards, to the Atlanta Hawks, to the Sacramento Kings, then the Boston Celtics. And in his last three seasons, he would play a total of just 31 games. Since 2022, no team has picked him up after being waived from the Celtics, and it's understandable why. His inability to stay healthy has simply diminished his value significantly. Some wonder, how good would Jabari Parker be if he hadn't injured his ACL in his rookie season? I guess we'll never know. Selected third overall, Joel Embiid seemed as one of the most talented prospects in the draft. However, injury concerns may have scared the Bucks away. And what a grave mistake this proved to be. Despite being seen as injury prone and carrying a foot injury at the time of the draft, the Sixers took the risk and picked him up with their first selection. After missing the first season after getting drafted, Embiid quickly became a dominant force as almost a perfect center. He was agile, could shoot threes, and even quickly picked up passing ability. Despite sometimes struggling with injury, Embiid became the centerpiece for the contending Philadelphia 76ers for over half a decade, and without Embiid, the Sixers were not the same team. While he hasn't led the Sixers to the NBA Finals, or Conference Finals for that matter, he came painfully close on multiple occasions. But still, he has achieved remarkable individual success, leading the league in scoring twice and earning the MVP award in the recent season. And prior to a meniscus injury this season, he was absolutely dominating the league, averaging over 35 points, 11 rebounds, and almost 6 assists with nearly 2 blocks. It seems Embiid is often held back by his health in the later stages of the season, limiting his ability to stay on the court. Selected as the first overall pick by the Timberwolves in the 2015 NBA Draft, Carl Anthony Towns made an immediate impact, earning the NBA Rookie of the Year title. His rookie season was highlighted by impressive number of 18.3 points, 10.5 rebounds, and 1.7 blocks per game. Throughout his career, Towns has continued to demonstrate his scoring prowess and shooting ability as a big man, maintaining career averages of 23 points, 11 rebounds, and shooting an impressive near 40% from beyond the arc. However, despite his statistical achievements, Towns has faced criticism for not fulfilling the expectations of postseason success, particularly in terms of lacking leadership skill. Nevertheless, recent improvements in his game coupled with his ongoing development, suggest a promising future for both Towns and the Timberwolves organization, now with Gobert and Anthony Edwards by his side, and a nice supporting cast. With Towns also continuing to refine his skills and contribute at a high level, there is optimism for Timberwolves team success in the coming years, and we may see a deep playoff push as early as this season. Next up, for the 2015 NBA Draft, after being selected behind Carl Anthony Towns and drafted by the Lakers, D'Angelo Russell was selected as the top guard prospect at number two. In his rookie season, he showed some early promise. Although he wasn't a standout player, he had respectable stats, averaging 13.2 points, 3.4 rebounds, and 3.3 assists per game. Soon D'Angelo Russell would be traded to the Brooklyn Nets, a team with a young core and low expectations. However, in his first season with the Nets, D'Lo would suffer a long-term injury, putting him out for a large part of the season. 
But it was the 2018-19 season when everything would change for the better. The 2018 season would be monumental for not only Russell, but also the Nets' entire franchise. He would average over 21 points, 7 assists, and shoot 37% from 3 on high output. His ability to score on all levels, constantly come in clutch, and get his teammates involved would be his standout qualities. This would later earn his spot on the All-Star team and bring his team to the 8th place in the East, surpassing all expectations of them. Despite a promising playoff run that gave hope for the future, the Brooklyn Nets traded D'Angelo Russell to the Golden State Warriors. After a season with the Warriors, he was traded to the Minnesota Timberwolves for Andrew Wiggins. In Minnesota, Russell averaged around 18 points and 6.5 assists, but would have lingering injuries, affecting his playing time, and the Wolves sought a better fit and traded him for Mike Conley during the 2023 trade period. Subsequently, Russell would make his long overdue return back to the team that drafted him, the Lakers. While his recent postseason performance wasn't exceptional, he has already demonstrated his capabilities as a top-tier point guard in the league. And with his prime years approaching, don't be surprised if the best of D'Lo is yet to come. Jalil Okafor's NBA journey started with high hopes after he was picked third overall by the Philadelphia 76ers in the 2015 draft. He was a big deal coming out of Duke University, where he helped clinch an NCAA championship. In his rookie season, Okafor showed flashes of brilliance, dropping an average of 17.5 points and snagging seven rebounds per game. But things got rocky pretty quickly. He had some off-court issues and clashed with the coaches, which led to a decline in his playing time and performance. The Sixers eventually traded him to the Brooklyn Nets, hoping for a fresh start. But unfortunately, he couldn't find his groove there either. He bounced around to a few more teams like the New Orleans Pelicans and Detroit Pistons, but he never quite recaptured his rookie magic. After his NBA stint didn't quite pan out, Okafor took his talents overseas, playing in leagues across China, Mexico, and Spain. In 2016, selected first overall by the 76ers, Ben Simmons' NBA journey has been quite the roller coaster. After sitting out his draft year due to injury, he came back swinging and snagged the Rookie of the Year award. Paired up with Joel Embiid, they seemed like the NBA's next power duo. But here's the thing. Simmons, standing tall at 6'10", had everyone drooling over his potential to be the next Magic Johnson. There was just one little problem. The dude couldn't shoot to save his life. Yet, Philly still believed in him, dishing out a massive contract extension. Things weren't looking so bad until the playoffs hit in 2021. Remember that Game 7 goof-up against the Hawks? Yeah, that wasn't pretty. Philly fans were livid, and the tension between Simmons and the 76ers hit an all-time high. Fast forward to Brooklyn. A fresh start, right? Nope. His performance was average at best, his attitude remained lackluster, and he even began to lose many fans. Even his back injuries seemed suspect to some. Now, with his hefty contract set to run out in 2025, the big question is, can Simmons bounce back? Or is he destined to fade into NBA obscurity? Only time will tell. But one thing's for sure. It's been one heck of a ride for Ben. In the subsequent year, the Lakers selected Brandon Ingram with the second overall pick in the 2017 NBA Draft, due to his offensive skill set being so dynamic. And many fans and analysts made comparisons between Ingram and a number two pick in the previous decade, Kevin Durant. Initially facing the challenges of a rookie, Ingram gradually showcased his potential, averaging 9.4 points and 4 rebounds in his first season. And his second season saw significant improvement averaging 16 points on 47% shooting. However, Ingram was eventually traded to the New Orleans Pelicans as part of a package for Anthony Davis. In New Orleans, Ingram's first season would see him break out and become a star player, later earning the Most Improved Player Award and his first All-Star selection, with impressive numbers of 23.8 points, 6 rebounds, and 4 assists per game. Following this season, despite some minor injuries, Ingram proved to be the most reliable scorer on the young Pelicans team, even leading a respectable playoff campaign in 2022 with a notable seven-game series against the Phoenix Suns. 
He currently remains as a leading scorer for the Pelicans alongside Zion, and his rise to stardom will only continue. Selected third overall in 2016 by the Celtics, Jalen Brown had a career that took a slower start compared to Simmons and Ingram. However, over the course of seven years, it's clear that Brown has emerged as the superior player among the three. In his debut season, he had just a minor role on Boston, averaging just 17 minutes and 6.6 .6 points and 2.8 rebounds on decent efficiency. And in his sophomore year, he would have a much bigger impact, with almost 15 points per game on nearly 47% from the field and almost 40% from downtown. He role would slowly and steadily begin to rise on a contending young Celtics team, and he would break 20 points per game by his fourth year. And his impact continued to rise even further. He secured two All-Star appearances, was named to the All-NBA second team in the 2022-23 season, and played a crucial role in the Celtics' journey to the 2022 NBA Finals. Brown also recently made headlines by signing a groundbreaking $304 million contract, showcasing his value to the organization that drafted him through his significant contributions, both offensively and defensively. Despite some small question marks regarding his ball handling skill, especially after the recent playoffs, there's no doubt that Jalen Brown is capable of becoming a top player in the league and help bring a championship to Boston after coming so close multiple times. During the 2017 NBA Draft, the Philadelphia 76ers made a bold move, trading up to secure the first pick and selecting Markel Fultz. However, Fultz's early NBA career was plagued by a shoulder injury diagnosed as thoracic outlet syndrome, limiting his impact on the court. In his first two seasons, he played only 14 games, averaging 7 points per game while struggling with his shooting form. Despite doubts about his potential, Fultz remained determined to bounce back. Joining the Orlando Magic in his third season, he experienced a resurgence, playing a career-high 72 games, averaging 12 points and 5 assists per game. While his 3-point shooting remained subpar, his mid-range game improved. However, injuries continued to disrupt Fultz's career, notably a torn ACL in the 2020-2021 season. Despite this setback, he bounced back in the 2022-23 season, season, playing 60 games and averaging 14 points and nearly 6 assists per game. He also showed improved shooting percentages. Fultz's journey exemplifies resilience, overcoming early setbacks to establish himself as a solid starter with room for growth. With continued good health, he has the potential to reach all-star level status in the future. For the third season in a row, the Los Angeles Lakers would have the second overall pick again. And this time, they would have their eyes on UCLA's Lonzo Ball, who was known for his exceptional passing and basketball IQ, but he was also heavily hyped up by his outspoken father. Despite the media scrutiny, he was still a highly talented prospect. Later selected as the second overall pick by the Los Angeles Lakers in the 2017 NBA Draft, Ball seemed to face immense pressure early in his career, however still showed flashes of his potential during his rookie season. After two seasons with the Lakers, he was traded to the New Orleans Pelicans alongside Ingram and continued to develop as a young player. And despite multiple injuries, he would effectively recover and improve his game, particularly improving his shooting. He averaged 14.6 points, nearly five rebounds and six assists. And with his newly fixed shooting form, his increased efficiency saw him become an elite shooter from long range. After two seasons with the Pelicans, he was traded to the Chicago Bulls who were in need of a starting point guard. This proved to be the exact fit for Lonzo, and this season saw him play his best basketball, shooting over 42% from three, as well as 13 points, five assists, five rebounds, and 1.8 steals. But as we know, this didn't last long. Tragically, Lonzo Ball suffered a severe knee injury in the midpoint of the 2021 season that has kept him out of action ever since. The expected recovery timeline has been repeatedly extended, with recent reports saying he will miss the entire 2023-24 season, prompting many fans to question if he will even return at all. That being said, recent reports say he is back to high-intensity basketball activity. We all hope that we have not seen the last of Lonzo Ball, as he has a one-of-a-kind game style that we haven't even seen reach his full potential. As for the Celtics, trading down from the first pick to the third pick as a result of the Danny Ainge decision, the Celtics would be more than happy with this selection, securing Jason Tatum. 
who as we know, turned out to be the standout player of that class. Jason Tatum has already emerged as one of the league's top players, displaying brilliance in his first season, even in the postseason as just a rookie. Averaging nearly 14 points and 5 rebounds on on 47.5% from the field and over 43% from deep, his playoff numbers would jump to over 18 points in 19 games, leading his team all the way to Game 7 of the Eastern Finals in 2018, before being sent home by LeBron and the Cavs. After this season, he continued to lead Boston to multiple Eastern Conference Finals appearances and even the NBA Finals in 2022. Tatum's impressive performance earned him all NBA first team honors for two consecutive seasons, and he showcased his scoring prowess by ranking sixth in the league with an average of 30.1 points per game last season. Tatum's potential seems limitless, and he now just needs a championship with the Celtics to solidify his position as a top three player in the league. Chosen as the first overall pick by the Phoenix Suns, DeAndre Ayton swiftly established himself as a consistent and reliable big man alongside Booker. In his rookie year, he averaged over 16 points, 10 rebounds, and nearly one block per game. However, the optimism that he would swiftly dominate the NBA with his impressive big man skills, with hopes for him to be the next Embiid, was soon dashed. Although he was a decent big, his successes in the paint was largely due to the assistance of CP3. While Ayton remained a dependable big man, he failed to reach higher levels. Despite reaching the NBA Finals in 2021 with Phoenix, his passive playing style became evident, especially in crucial games. As a result, over the recent offseason, he joined a young Blazers team after a trade, and this season, he's continued to prove to be an average big man lacking versatility. Although not a bust, he is far from a top number one pick in the recent NBA. Marvin Bagley III, drafted second overall by the Kings, initially showed some promise as an explosive forward, averaging 15 points, 7.6 boards on 50% from the field in his rookie year. However, he would face setback with a significant injury in his second season. The following two seasons saw him continue to deal with injuries, soon seeing him traded to the Pistons. However, lingering injuries continued to impact his time on court. But when he is on the court, he continues to showcase flashes of brilliance. He's now hoping for sustained good health, which will open up more opportunities on the basketball court for him to gain some consistency again. Third pick Luka Doncic was an exceptional talent with a remarkable EuroLeague record, as well as being named as the EuroLeague MVP at 18. So many were surprised he was not the top pick in the 2018 NBA draft. This was largely due to multiple busts from Europe in previous years, causing concerns from teams as well as the media. Enhancing these concerns of Luka's ability, especially highlighting his lack of athleticism. But as we know, this didn't matter. Doncic was selected third overall, originally picked by the Atlanta Hawks, but was traded to the Dallas Mavericks for Trey Young. And fast forward to the present day over five years later, he's in the conversation for MVP every season, and he continues to break records seemingly every game he plays. In his fifth NBA season, Luka is averaging 34 points, 8 rebounds, and 9 assists, shooting 48% from the field and nearly 39% from three. These stats are almost unheard of. He's been carrying a Mavericks team with Kyrie, and doing so in epic fashion. Now the next objective of Luka will be bringing a championship to Dallas once again. For the final draft class of the decade, in 2019, Zion Williamson would be selected first overall by the New Orleans Pelicans. Coming out of Duke, although he started his NBA career with a bang, showing a physical presence that was way beyond his years, an early injury in his rookie year would halt this momentum. But when he recovered for his sophomore season, when on the court, Zion still dominated in the paint with his huge frame. In his second season, Zion averaged a ridiculous 27 points, 7 rebounds, and nearly 4 assists in 61 games. However, a major foot injury would keep him out for the entirety of his third season. And this is when things began to change. Zion would spend this time indulging in other areas, like food and women, seeing his size go up and discipline go down. And when he returned in the 2022-23 season, despite dominance while playing, he couldn't seem to stay on the court and was simply overweight. Now in this 2023-24 season, despite some of his numbers going down this season to 22 points and 6 rebounds, his assists has gone up to 5 per game, a career high, 
and his efficiency has seemed good. More importantly, Zion is on track to play his most games ever for a season, and has apparently lost 25 pounds recently, as he's been the primary reason why the Pelicans are near the top four spot in the West. There's no doubt Zion is his own biggest enemy, as he attempts to make some noise with the Pelicans in the playoffs this season. As for the 2019 NBA Draft, although Ja Morant was a zero-star recruit during his senior year in high school, after his two-year college campaign, his name had grown a massive buzz. His athleticism, finishing ability, passing ability is what stood out the most, and after Memphis drafted him second overall, he would step into the Premier Basketball League and dominate as a rookie. Selected second overall by the Grizzlies, he quickly emerged as one of the league's most electrifying young players, averaging 17.8 points, 7.3 assists, and 4 rebounds per game. After winning Rookie of the Year, the following season saw Morant continue to impress, solidifying his status as a rising star and potential future face of the league. But it was his third season where he took things to the next level. After averaging 19 points in his sophomore season, in his third season, Ja would average 27.4 points on elite efficiency and nearly 7 assists, another impressive jump, earning him the Most Improved Player award. That being said, after signing a max near $200 million contract over the 2022 offseason, Ja's demeanor and attitude towards basketball seemed to have changed. Although he didn't have many on-court issues, it was off the court during the 2022-23 season where things would go wrong. During the recent season, Ja would be involved in reckless violent allegations, adding to the later questionable Instagram live videos that were broadcasted that we've all seen. Despite his electrifying game, his actions have led to unfortunate circumstances, hindering the full exploration of his talent. Despite the big suspension, when returned, Ja would again show his skill. But a significant shoulder injury is what has kept him on the sidelines this 2023-24 season. RJ Barrett, selected third overall by the New York Knicks, entered the NBA with high expectations, but still seen as number three to Jaw and Zion. The Canadian shooting guard, son of former player Rowan Barrett, showcased his talents at Duke before making the leap to the NBA. Despite controversially missing out on an NBA all-rookie team, Barrett has shown promise, averaging nearly 18 points per game. However, he remains a work in progress, facing challenges in finishing near the rim, improving his outside shooting, and enhancing his playmaking abilities. In his rookie season, Barrett averaged 14.3 points, 5 rebounds, 2.6 assists, and 1 steal in 30.4 minutes per game. In January 2022, Barrett set a franchise record as the youngest Nick to achieve consecutive games with at least 30 points at just 21 years old. He also joined a prestigious group of NBA players, including Kevin Garnett, Kobe Bryant, and LeBron James, by tallying 2,000 points, 500 rebounds, and 300 assists before turning 22. He's a nice all-round small forward, who recently returned to Toronto, Canada, where he was born, now having a significant role on the young, new-look Raptors squad. Anyways, that's it for the video. What happened to the top three picks of the entire 2010 decade? Who was your favorite player on the list? Please let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Thanks for watching Sports Sphere, and we'll see you next time.